A crime must be abolished, not a criminal. This is a basic concept of reformative theory of punishment. But whether this particular thing is happening in the society? No. Why? Because it is very common to understand how a crime is committed. But the technical problem is to understand why a crime is committed. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Priya Sapaha and today in this video we are going to discuss about a technical issue to understand why any crime is committed. That is an introduction to criminal profiling. There are many ways to understand why a crime is committed because time to time many criminologists have given many theories related to causation of crime. There is economic theory, social theory, uh, psychological theory, psychodynamic approach, anthropological theory, geographical theory, biological theory and many other theories and sometimes rather I say many times they are really helpful to understand causation of crime. But still there is a problem to understand why a particular crime is being committed. Now to understand the basic psyche of criminal a particular thing, a particular technique has been used. Usually the problem occurs whenever there is any heinous crime or if there is any serial killing or if there is a serial sexual predator. If such type of cases are happening in the society then it is really difficult to understand what is a psyche of that particular criminal. So basically criminal profiling is something to understand the psyche of a criminal and also to understand what is his behavior what is a pattern of that particular criminal and by the her and with the help of that particular technique it is also possible to understand what was going to be a future crime of that particular criminal so that's why this particular technique is very very effective which is called as criminal profiling the technique of criminal profiling was first ever used in the case of Jack the Ripper. I have already made a video on the story of Jack the Ripper. You may see that particular video. And in that case, basically, this was a case happened in UK where there was a serial killing of prostitute. And the killer was killing those prostitutes in a particular pattern. Now that particular pattern is he used to not only kill that uh, prostitute but he also do a sexual assault on them and he used to cut a private parts of those prostitute. Although this particular case is still unsolved but the pattern to know the psyche of a criminal has been used first ever time in Jack the Ripper case. So this is the history. Later on not only in UK but US also adopted this particular technique and it is really helpful in the case of a heinous crime. No matter it is a crime of a sexual predator, serial killer or even the terrorism. It is always helpful. So basically criminal profiling in something which is a technique used to understand the basic psyche of a criminal with the help of a behavioral scientist and a criminologist both and basically they used to go to the crime scene they try to understand the not only about the criminal but also the history of a victim because history of victim is something which is really important to understand the basic concept or basic idea or motive behind any crime so it is necessary to understand the history of victim also on the basis of the history of victim and a crime scene and the pattern of a, a crime it is helpful for a criminal profiler to understand not only the behavior of the criminal but also he can draw a picture of any suspect but you have to remember one thing very clearly that it is only a prediction of a suspect criminal profiling does not mean that he will identify that who is a suspect rather they only say that they may be a suspect because they are suspect not actual offender 
so they can identify which type of a personality that particular offender is having and what is a pattern of that particular crime and not only this but they are also helpful to make you understand what would be a future incidents or a future crime of that particular criminal so this technique is really very helpful to identify not only the crime and criminal but also helps to for the prevention of crime popularly there are four approaches of criminal profiling the first one is geographical approach now geographical approach is basically it is related to the happening of a crime that means where that particular crime has been committed now not only the place where the crime has been committed but also the place of a victim if the crime is committed on the victim's place only then the combination there is a combination of the place of the crime also and about the place of the victim also but it may happen that the crime has been committed in some other place and victim is residing in some other place it may be place may refer to a home to a city to a country that may be differ depending upon the case so the geographical status of that particular victim because that will clearly help to understand whether that criminal is residing near or whether that particular criminal is working in uh, the office of that particular person or that particular criminal may be uh, a acquaintance or a family member or a friend or living in a society or a colony anywhere so it is really helpful to understand or to use a geographical approach to make out the the concept of why that particular crime has been committed the second approach is the clinical approach this approach is mainly directed at offenders thought to be suffering from dementia or other psychological aggravation or any other psychological diseases basically it is based on insight from psychiatry and clinical psychology to conduct the investigation third approach is investigating psychology now investigating psychology is something which is used with the help of different psychological theories in which any criminal profiler used to find out what could be the behavior of that particular criminal that means they try to find out a criminal behavior of a particular offender so that they can identify their pattern of killing and why that particular offender is committing such type of crime and the last approach is typological approach now typological approach is basically used to categorize which type of criminal or offender that particular person is now which type means it may be uh, related to a class also it may be related to the caste also it may be related to a sex also it may be related to normal and a mental illness also so basically these are types whether a criminal is poor or rich whether criminal is male or female whether the criminal is living in a village or in a city whether criminal is working or a businessman whether criminal is not at all working whether a criminal is normal or of having a mental disease or any any other problem what is the behavior of that particular criminal that particular type has to be identified because on that basis it is easy to identify a particular criminal so basically if these four approaches is used then it is really easy or to make out who is basically a suspect and what will be his future crime there are two popular technique which is used in uk and united states of criminal profiling the first one is top down approach or top down technique which is popularly and commonly used in usa and the another one is bottom up approach which is commonly used in uk top down technique is used by fbi in united state basically this particular technique has been started after a series of in depth interview of 36 offender basically they are sexually oriented murderers 
so after the interviews of these particular murderers or offender this particular technique has been started using by FBI in the United States there are basically four steps of top-down technique which is used in USA the first one is data assimilation now data assimilation as the name itself indicate that collecting all sort of datas now all sort of data means related to the crime scene related to the crime related to offender victim forensic report any other report and any other thing which can be helpful or which is related to a particular crime basically first of all they used to collect all the possible data which is available and which can be gathered by any other sources the next step is crime scene classification now basically crime scene classification in this technique is used to understand uh, usually whether the criminal is a organized criminal or a disorganized criminal whether the crime which is committed is in a organized way or in a disorganized way you might be thinking whether this is helpful to understand why the crime is committed so yes it is helpful to understand why the crime is committed because there is a special pattern of a organized crime also and disorganized crime also and there are a behavioral pattern of a organized criminal and disorganized criminal so if anyone can understand the pattern of crime and on the basis of that a behavior or pattern of a criminal it will be easy to understand that whether uh, if a serious serial of crime is committed whether that has been committed by a same person or there are another uh, different person who are committing that crime S and now the third step is crime reconstruction now crime reconstruction is basically when all the data has been collected and if they also understand whether the criminal or a crime scene or a crime is organized and disorganized then usually they use to reconstruct the crime scene that this particular criminal must be having this type of behavior and this that particular suspect whoever is a suspect offender why he has committed that crime and what could be the behavior and what could be the mode and why he has committed that particular crime all that has been they used to draw a picture of this particular series of incidents in this particular step or technique and the last step is profile generation now on the basis of data assimilation than about the organization or classification of crime than also portraying the picture then a criminal profiler can easily indicate the suspect of that particular crime that which type of a criminal that particular offender is now type means which type of behavior or a criminal behavior that person is having what is his demographical uh, approach and where he used to stay what is a reason behind that particular crime what is a pattern of that particular crime how he has committed why he has committed and what could be the future action of that particular criminal now the next technique is bottom up approach which is usually used in uk now this does not rely on the any previous assumption this is basically uh, on the gathering or uh, collecting all sort of data uh, by the help of the computer only that means technical data and studying a uh, psychological theories and psychological aspect using some of the methodology and on the basis of all these things they used to predict the criminal behavior of that particular offender and also the psychology and future prediction of a crime of a criminal offender so basically this technique have two aspects the first one is interpersonal consistency and the second one is special consistency now as far as interpersonal consistency is concerned it is basically a relation between the victim and the offender 
they try to find out the relation between both of them and on the basis of that particular relation they identify whether there is what would be the reason behind any crime in spatial consistency basically it is used to identify the area or a geographical area of the crime scene that means where the crime has been committed this basically uh, is used to identify what could be a crime mapping that whether or in which area or in which location at what time the another or a future crime can be committed because on the basis of this particular technique they used to find out that how and why the crime is committed on that particular location only because that also can play a very very important role to identify the offender and a future cr criminal criminal profiling is a perfect combination of the rational and psychological instincts with the detail and fine points of the crime scene the process of criminal profiling may be divided into five stages so the first process is profiling inputs now profiling input is basically to understand how a crime is committed and on top of it why crime is committed how it can be helpful now to use this particular process it is necessary to gather all the possible data or information related to that particular crime criminal and victim it may be by taking or gathering all the information by the crime scene also by the forensic report also by any other report which is helpful to assess that particular crime about by the information or interviews of the society also friends family peer group place of work crime incidents anywhere all the possible information must be gathered to make a profile input the next approach is decision processing decision processing is basically to understand why that particular crime has been committed that means to understand the motive of that criminal why he has selected that particular victim where he might be residing where the victim is residing whether that particular offender is professional or amateur what could be the idea of committing that particular crime these are the things which are, which can be identified in this particular process next process is crime assessment basically crime assessment is to draw or reconstruct the whole of the event or whole of the crime scene or a action or incidents of that particular crime no matter it is pre crime during crime and post crime what would have happened before or what was the psyche of that criminal or what was the incidents which triggered that particular offender to commit a crime or what would be happening at that particular incidents at the place or during the time what could be happening then what happened after the commission of the crime all the picture was reconstructed and that is also helpful to understand the behavior of not only the offender but also a victim next process is the offender profile basically in this stage it is easy for any criminal profiler to make a hypothetical picture of an offender that means which type of behavior that particular offender is having and why he has committed crime now the information or profile of that particular offender include about the age about sex about criminal behavior the place where he reside whether it is working or not working whether it is he is organized or disorganized whether he is normal or he is having any uh, mental illness which type of behavior or pattern he is using and many more thing so in this stage it is a process where a profile of offender is made and the last one is investigative use now investigative use is basically a last step of a criminal profiling process because at this stage any criminal profiling is having an idea of a crime scene also type of a suspect 
offender also behavior of offender also and the pattern of the offender also so this could be useful in investigation process for any of the law uh, law enforcement agency to narrow down the suspect that the suspect could be like this and he will commit like this pattern of crime or this is a particular area or a particular location where we can look after to in search of that particular crime and if they have already uh, detained some of the person this particular investigative use is also easy to uh, plan what could be the questions or what could be a type of an interview or what could be the question related to the interrogation also so that is really helpful for the law enforcement agency to narrow down their search also to narrow down their investigation also and to narrow down their a uh, proper and specific investigative or interrogative questions so at the end just sum up what is criminal profiling so first one is criminal profiling is an in-depth analysis of the crime scene and finding common pattern with previous incidences secondly it helps to identify the choice of victim manner time and location types of the crimes communication from the suspect and the condition of the crime scenes thirdly multiple other factors are taken into consideration in order to determine the age race mental state and other characteristics of a suspect ultimately criminal profilers are able to draw a picture of the possible and reliable motives of the crime however criminal profiling should not be confused as a tool that helps to identify the specific offender linked to a crime so that was a brief introduction of criminal profiling hope you like the video and if you like it do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe my channel you may also follow us on various social media platform with the name of law colleague you we are also having our website law colleague you.com you can refer to that particular website so thank you for watching see you soon bye bye